everyone. Our next guest is an award-winning television producer, entertainment journalist, and an author. She also happens to be the daughter of the queen of comedy, Joan Rivers. And just like her mother, she has a quick wit and a very funny bone. The New York Times bestselling author Melissa Rivers is back with another dose of comedy in her latest book, Lies My <clears throat> Mother Told Me, Tall Tales from a Short Woman. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Good morning, good afternoon. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that we're very excited to be speaking to you about your book, Lies My Mother Told Me. And it's not a memoir in the traditional sense. It's actually a comedic homage to your mother, Joan Rivers, who passed away in 2014. Melissa, do you mind telling us a little bit more about the book? Okay, and you put it beautifully, saying it is a comedic homage. Uh, my writing partner and I, during COVID, were like, okay, we need to figure something out to work on. And everyone keeps asking me, or kept asking me, still asking me, uh, what would your mother be saying about all this? So we started to write an article. Then we decided, we're like, no, no, we're going to tell the history of the world, <laughs> as she would tell it. And honestly, we got really stuck with Napoleon because we wanted something with like being on Elba and a Starbucks and we just couldn't figure it out. But we realized we were, <clears throat> excuse me, onto something. And we're like, parents tell kids lies. I know I lie to my son and I know my mother lied to me. So we're like, let's run with that concept. And it was, it was wonderful being able to write in my mother's voice and contrast it with my voice and just see how far we could push. Because we could say a lot of things that maybe we would get in trouble for saying, but by putting it in my mother's voice, <laughs> we could do it. <laughs> and the scary thing is, is people keep saying to me, did she really say these things? I'm like, no, no, I do not remember her actually being friends with the Pope. Yeah. Okay, so th th that, to, that, to that point, these are tall tales and lies, and it's comedy, and you've made that clear. But is there anything true, anything <laughs> true in the book then? Well, let's see. We used to have Thanksgiving dinner. That's true. Okay. Um, I have a son. That's true. Okay. Uh, we knew Siegfried and Roy, but I never made them cry. So that's <laughs> sort of half true. Yeah, that's pretty much where it ends. Okay. Okay, but <laughs> what about the other way? Because in the book, you talk about how your mom turned lying into an art form. So can you tell us a lie she actually did tell you in real life? Oh, God. Um, the best one is the one I always cite when people ask me, you know, just like anybody, I was very anxious before giving birth to my son, and I'm like, I definitely... Like, I'm scared, and I'm this, and yes, I want the epidural, but I'm so scared. And she looked me dead in the eye and said, oh, Melissa, please. It was so easy. I don't know what you're <laughs> worrying about. They gave me one shot of painkiller, and I was fine. And so I pressed her a little bit on the topic, you know, closer to the time of birth. And she goes, I go, what was it? She goes, I think it was Demerol. I'm like, did you have an IV? She's like, yes. I'm like, you had an IV Demerol drip. Okay, that is not one shot of painkiller. I'm like, they could have done open heart surgery on you. <laughs> and she's like, no, it was like one shot. They put in the IV and that was that. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if that was an actual lie, but wow, was it revisionist history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, in the book, you know, on the subject of childbirth, you mentioned that Joan had a very special relationship with your son, Cooper, and that he reminds you of her. So tell us a bit about that. Does he lie? Yeah. Oh, God, no. And if uh, he's fascinating, though. He's a terrible liar. He's a <laughs> terrible liar. Thank God it has made being a parent so much easier. <laughs> um... He, there, okay, my mother, Ostage, had a very silly sense of humor. Mm. She loved practical jokes and would do these, it, these, oh, these incredibly elaborate jokes. And she just was silly. Like, she and her best friend, who I talk about in the book, Margie, used to walk down the street in New York, and they'd be, like, standing on a corner at a stoplight, and they would turn to the person next to them and be like, excuse me, which of us is prettier? <laughs> like, that's what they use, like... 
And Cooper has that same silly sense of humor. Oh. For uh, Valentine's Day this year, he sends me, I get this box, and it's from Amazon. I'm like, oh, okay, what do you get me? And he's like, call me, call me, call me as soon as you get it. Put me on FaceTime. I'm like, okay. It's like, I want to see your face when you open it. I'm like, okay. It's this wood box, and I open it, and a rubber spider <gasps> comes flying out of it and lands on your head. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, crying with laughter. <laughs> well, you made many of us cry with laughter in the 90s when you and your mother revolutionized the red carpet and made who are you wearing the catchphrase that it has become today. So what was it like to work those red carpets back then? Oh, it was so fun. Back then, sorry, my bangs are so long and I'm getting them <laughs> tomorrow. It's bad when your glasses are mm -hmm. holding up your bangs. Um, <laughs> It it um it was so fun. It was much lighter. Mm -hmm. People allowed themselves to have fun. Mm -hmm. Everything wasn't so controlled. Um, people actually made decisions on their clothes. That was kind of fascinating. They weren't just being paid to wear things. And it was just a different time and fun and light. And my mom used to say it was like the best cocktail party ever. You talk oh. to everybody for like two minutes and moved on. That's great. Yeah. And at the same time, as just said, I mean, it really did revolutionize the way we watch the red carpet. And especially the, this was before Twitter. It was before Instagram. It was before social media. Like we were watching you. So what are some of your favorite red carpet moments? Do a couple stand out? Um, uh, when Nicole Kidman wore the sort of chartreuse green, I think it was McQueen. Mm. Um, that was a real fashion moment. Uh huh. That dress. Was yes. it this? Was it this dress, uh, Melissa? Yes, it was. Yeah. Well, okay. Pictures. That's impressive. <laughs> um, that was a real fashion moment that really brought couture uh -huh. onto the red carpet. I. Um, so you know, that is so great that you mentioned it. The reason why we had that on standby is because this moment is famous. That was the moment Couture came on the red carpet, but your mom hated the dress. <laughs> and But in hindsight, she ended up loving it. Oh, you know, but wow. In the moment, she was like, what is this color? <laughs> yeah. What is this color? I hate it. So that her opinion changed on it. But I think with fashion, our opinions do change on things that were great and things that were awful. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. I agree. True. I think what made your mom so great is that she would say in the moment what she thought of it. Like, yes. you know, that's what made that so memorable. She was, she didn't just say to you, whisper, she hated it. She said it to the camera. She said it to yeah. the she, she would still, by the way, she would still hate the color. She would yeah. still hate the color. Listen, Melissa, Joan was always, she'll always be known rather for her biting wit and edgy comedy. We're really curious to know if you think or how she would navigate today's comedy scene, which feels like it's under mm. scrutiny, especially with uh, so-called cancel culture and, and many recent controversies. What do you think Joan uh, would make of it? You're very kind to the way you put it. It's under siege. It's not actually, you know, it, it's gotten way too far. I think she would have been very frustrated. I would hope and I think she would be grandfathered kind of in with more latitude like Dave Chappelle has been. Um, I think at this point, cancel culture would be part of her act. Yeah. Yeah. She know? would and be I using think that's it. sort of how she would get away with it. Mm hmm. Melissa, by absolutely making fun of everything you cannot say and using that as the way to say it. Mm -hmm. Melissa, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing tall tales with us. We really enjoyed it. Oh, good. Thank you. It's such a fun, easy, it's a Mother's Day gift. It's all those kinds of things that it sort of, it's just a break mentally. <laughs> well, one more time for everyone watching. The book is called Lies My Mother Told Me, and it is out right now. Get it for your mother for Mother's Day.